disclosure that ASHA always requires, so we have it here. I do own Mindwing Concepts. It's been 29 years in the development and still continuing. Okay. Thank you to Elise Fishkin. You just saved me a lot of work because I, I almost didn't record this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so, okay. Um, here we go. So, um, oh, we're why going is this to... in presenter mode? Sorry, I don't know why this is doing. Hold on, I just realized what somebody just said. It's in presenter mode for some reason. Um, wait a minute. Always a I'm little. So, there's always off. something. Anyway, we're going to be talking about high impact ways to use Brady. Okay, sorry. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Thank you for whoever just noticed that too. Somebody else just noticed that. Um, okay, let me see. You think we've never done one of these before? Oh, is it still doing that? It's the same. Okay, hold on. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Is that, okay, there we go. Thank you. Thanks right. so much. Okay. It lasts until three. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So did you want to say that? I think we, I think we should just, this is all the information that was in the webinar introduction. So I think we should just dive right in okay. at this point, since I just had technical difficulties for 10 minutes. Okay. And so this is the, uh, so when we're talking about oral language development and young children, we're talking about setups like circle time, choice times, centers, all kinds of centers in the pre-K, routines, which are huge, um, outdoor play, and then problem solving in general about what is going to happen, but also the development of conflict resolution, which you can do if you have a narrative mode of thought. So that's what we're trying to develop, and that's what this will lead into today. But I thought you'd like to have this because this slide is a great collaborative slide. Okay. And we've done a lot of work on Brady over the years in many, many places. Um, Orange, Orange County, Florida, Baltimore, Pinellas County, Fairfax, New York that's City, sorry. and um, Hawaii. And these are the Hawaii uh, preschool content standards that I just thought would be valuable for you to see how many, um, because they're very similar in all the states and countries, um, just to see the different things that Brady targets within that um, standard alignment. And they had highlighted that. Mm -hmm. And they us. had highlighted it. And sent that to us. So Brady doesn't have a torso. So we wanted to mention that. And here's Brady. Uh, and of course, Brady is an offshoot of the Story Grammar Marker. Story Grammar Marker was the first tool 29 years ago. And Brady was an adaptation of that when people started to say, don't you have something for younger children? And I'd say, well, you can use the story grammar marker. Oh, but it doesn't have big icons and things like that. But the design of it was triggered by a drawing that was done by Kyla and who is now out of college, right? And anyway, this was her grandfather. And this is what it looked like, the arms, the legs, and of course, in time, you want children to develop a body image. Uh, but at the beginning, what they're looking at is the faces and expressions of those around them. So I just wanted to talk about that. And then it made it easy for us to have two legs, one for the main idea and one for the details as things develop. Okay. Now, You'll notice that on Brady, there are two legs and they are braided. The braid represents the strands of oral language, not that you would teach 
children specifically that that's why the braid is there, but that's the foundation of the whole thing. With literate oral language, the child is going to be able to navigate the curriculum. So there are six strands that are used in these two legs, and they represent these things relative to how speech and language pathologists look at language. Um, pragmatics, phonology, it's all here. Now this diagram I show in just about every workshop I've ever done. It's been from the beginning that I created this, although we've added, I'm sorry. Uh, we've added a reference to the Common Core and college and career readiness at the top, but it all begins with oral language. And the better children get at it, the better they're going to be able to access literacy. So this is where your braid figures in in those colorful building blocks, but they aren't just piled on top of each other. Language develops as one strand touches another. The child might be great at vocabulary, but have a problem with syntax or uses a verb, but doesn't have the ED on it. Things like that, that you'd be working on simultaneously with telling the story. So, Discourse is what we're talking about today. Discourse means that uh, there's a character in a setting, it's conversation, it's storytelling, and it's information text. So that's why the icons go on to Brady. And um, this focus on this is narrative discourse. And it's where all the other strands of language come together in conjunction with thought. So it's a match, it's a matching up of language and thought. So as a child is struggling to um, start to communicate as a little child, they might just say, boy, kick. And then everybody around them says, oh yes, the boys are kicking the ball. So then the child says, boy, kick ball. And then we can start with kicking and kicked and all kinds of things like that. So bear in mind that while working on the big structure of the story, that you're also going to be able to work on um, the uh, smaller units that you see fit. They only see a part of Brady, is that okay? Um, or are they seeing they, more they can than see that? the whole thing. Oh, they can? Yeah. All right. And whatever you can see, they can see. Okay. And whatever you can see in the screen, they can see. All right, because most of my screen is that. Yeah, wait, I'll, so I'll change this. So I wanted can... to mention, I was oh, seeing most oh, of wait. it, thank you. You can't see the whole thing. All right. Oh, sorry, wait. I think that's the best I can do. All right. Oh, wait, hold on. That better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, here it that's is. Better. Okay. All right, so. Anyway, this next slide shows the oral literate continuum put forth by Carol Westby, talking about how narration is the center of the oral literate continuum, which starts with conversation, guided conversation, and develops through narration into information and talking about information text. So bearing in mind that eventually, we can be better conversationalists because we can tell the story and we can be better at information because um, we can tell that as part of our stories as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. This is just a definition of a narrative, which is what we're going to focus on today, but it's a story. It involves telling or retelling. And often we say, uh, we want an account from somebody. So we'll say, tell daddy what we saw today uh, of events and experiences orally and in writing. A story can be true or fictitious and takes into account one or more points of view. And that's what we want to talk about today too. You can use Brady to talk about several points of view. All right. Sorry, that's the home phone. That's okay. Okay. Um, this was, is a quote that we really love um, that I've always used um, from Carol Westby again, but of all the things we do with 
stories. We dream, you'll say, oh, you know what I dreamt about last night? We remember things, we anticipate things that we're going to do. We hope, we love, despair, hate, believe, doubt, plan, construct, and learn in narrative. So it's a big thing and it starts in a very little way. This is Brady the Story Braid and um, the character, the setting. And I like to mention that uh, there are songs that go with this. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, the setting tells where the characters are. Okay, so things like that. There's the initiating event or the kickoff. Nothing happens until the kickoff. The feeling, how the character feels about what happened. The plan that the character makes because he had a feeling about what happens. These are all the attempts that the character does. First, next, after that, finally. If there's more than that, you just push these up and begin again using them. Okay, so the at the end, the there's a bow and some hearts. So the bow is the tie up, how things turn out. Does the character get what he planned or not? So you can put it right on top of the hand. And then how does the character feel? It's a time for reflection. Uh, is the character happy with what happened or not? Okay. And the, the songs are in the manual. The Brady manual. They're in the Brady manual. Okay. okay. Now, story. story of, this is adult child interaction, building a conversation with narrative development. So um, what I wanted to uh, talk about is that storytelling is social and young children rely on their caregivers to structure a coherent story with them via a conversation. So what I like to do when I'm helping somebody to develop a conversation is I like to think about the developmental sequence of a narrative and I'm going to illustrate it by using this because it's about characters in settings and children will always give you some part of the story that you can start to build from. So we want to have conversations with our students. And so one day um, when I was working in a, in a school, I had a student come in early to tell me a story. And she was actually in fourth grade, but what she was functioning at was a character, a setting and actions that were in order. She was using first, next, after that, then, and I was structuring her to work on the kickoff and use the word because. So anyway, she came in one morning and she said to me, me and mommy went to the mall. So that was a char two characters who had a common setting. And we could talk about what they saw at the mall and different things like that if we wanted to. So I said to her, oh, what did you do at the mall? And so what was I focusing on there with my question? I didn't have Brady with me at the time, but I had Brady in my head, which is what I was doing. So first, we went to JCPenney and I got a new dress. Then we went to Friendly's and we had something to eat and then we went to the arcade. So she was talking about the three things that she did when they were at the mall, which was my question, my scaffold. And I was scaffolding her along this narrative um, pathway. Okay, so then she just kind of stood there. So I said, so what happened at the mall? Did something happen? And she was nodding. And she said, mommy lost her pocketbook her purse, we call it pocketbook in New England. So mommy lost her pocketbook. And I said, how did she, what did she do? And she said, she freaked out. So that was a what? An action that mommy did, mommy freaked out. So I gave her a feeling word for freaking out. I said that mommy was upset. And she was nodding that mommy was upset. And 
when she, I said, why was she upset? Because she lost her pocketbook at the mall. All right. So I said to her, what did you, she want to do? And she said, find it as if I had two heads. Okay. So I said, so what did you do to find it? She said, we went back to JCPenney and they didn't have it. And then we went to the arcade and they didn't have it. And we went to customer service and guess what? And I said, they had it. And she said, yes, but that's not what I wanted to tell you. So I'm there saying, oh, wow. But I scaffolded all this way. And she said, I wanted to tell you. And then she stood almost at attention. And she said, because mommy found her pocketbook, I got a big Sunday at Friendly's. So what was that? She wanted to tell me an accomplishment, a language accomplishment that she had. She used the word because and wanted to tell me that, but she needed me to scaffold the whole story for her to get up there. So that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. Sure. Scaffolding the whole story. Okay. You were gonna show that. Yes, Sorry. yes. And I um, have this to show you too. And I'm just not sure, do you think if I backed up? I've tried a few different ways. It's hard on the yeah, screen. This so. is um, the Our Friend Brady poster. And it comes with the Brady doll. The, I just, the Brady kit. The Brady kit, the Brady kit, excuse me. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, nothing kind of fills in for the manipulative and the viewing of the icons. So anyway, on this Our Friend Brady poster, I just wanted you, I filled it out. It has, I put Velcro on them. They come without any fastener, but I have it in a frame. I can put it flat on the table. I can um, put it up like this. I've used it in centers. Um, and kids get a lot of use out of it that way. Um, so it's very dull. It's only in grayscale until you add what? The, um, the icons to it over time. So um, what I like about the Brady poster as well is it has the words first, next, after that, then, and finally. And those words are related to the actions on the side. It has words like once upon a time. Um, um, they said, somebody asked, do the colored beads mean something? No, the colored beads don't mean anything specifically. It's just on this, it made it more, poster. graphically, it made it more colorful. They're just different actions that occur. Um, so we have a character up there who could be Clifford. And we could talk about Clifford was a big red dog who happened to be at a construction site. So the word who is here as a connector that we can model. Um, suddenly, the kickoff happened, or one day when he was at the construction site, this particular kickoff happened. How did he feel? What was his plan? And then we've got our and, so, but, and because. Those are basic conjunctions to teach early on. So I just wanted you to be aware that there's the manipulative itself, and then there's a more abstract type of tool that comes with it as well. And um, we can acquaint kids very early on with those particular words um, as that was cohesive words. Narrative. That was. What was? You just, the personal narrative you had with that little girl. Oh yes, that was a personal narrative. Um, what I was structuring was a personal narrative with that child. A personal narrative doesn't always have to have a kickoff though. A personal narrative could be just that there was a character and the character could be my granddaughter, Casey. Casey went to the apple orchard and what did she do at the apple orchard? And I could be wearing Brady like this if I wasn't concerned about holding it up for you to see. You see, I wear it around my neck. 
there's an extender that extends it if you want it lower than that. So you can use it and not have to wear it and not have to use your hands. But it is a puppet. So there's a place Wait, to I do try, that. Wait, I put it on again because I don't know if people could see. People said they couldn't see you wearing it. Right. Here, I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing for a minute so they can see it bigger. Yeah, I think it's. So here's Casey, but it doesn't show it. Um, well, here's how I look with it on. Maybe back. stand back a little bit from mm -hmm. the camera and they they can see. There's Brady. There is a um, a stretchy green piece of material that you can lower it if you want it lower on yourself. But you can readily sit in a chair using this. And Brady just kind of is nice just in front of you like that. A child can be the Brady of the day at morning meeting and wear Brady around his or her waist. So if um, a personal narrative doesn't have to have a kickoff is what I was going to mention. So it could be about Casey's trip to an apple orchard and what did with her class. She got on the bus, she arrived at the apple orchard, they gave her a pail, she picked the apples and they came home. That's a personal narrative as well. With children who have trouble expressing feelings and things like that, we want to work on personal narratives as well as telling and telling and retelling stories. And when we are collaborating with school adjustment counselors and people who are dealing with children with um, problems, we would want to communicate that we have this tool that could help them tell a story. So types of personal narratives are recounts and accounts. And I just want to answer a question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Angelica, um, you had asked just a second ago about going, couldn't going to the apple orchard be a kickoff? And, and you're right. So once they're at the apple orchard, here are the things they did. But say you were having, you know, a ho-hum day, um, you and your family were just at home hanging around, and all of a sudden someone said, let's go to the apple orchard. Yes, you felt happy and excited about that. And your plan is to get some, pick some apples and have a good time. So um, that would, you're exactly right. That is though the episode prior to what Mary Ellen was talking about um, there, it, where she talked about what you did at the apple orchard. I just and wanted to clarify, but that's a great question. And that's because life is a series of kickoffs, one happening after the other. And so, um, that's a good point because the trip to the apple orchard was after the anticipation of knowing you were going and things like that. And to plan to go to the apple orchard may have been the um, idea of someone who noticed that group of children was bored. So anyway, so this is narratives are, personal narratives are all around us. And if we can assist our children with telling even mundane things that they've done during this COVID experience, um, that helps them. I think so, we probably just skip, they could read Yes, these. we're going to, to you can read these. And they're just more information about asking open-ended questions and embellishing vocabulary and that getting at WH questions, all the WH questions are really answered by using Brady. Okay. Who, what, when, where, and especially why. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, um, and then this was an important quote, I thought. Okay, yes. Preschool personal narratives predicts aspects of adolescent writing. So it used to be that people thought that children talked and that was great, but now it's really proven that the quality of oral language interfaces with how they do in school. Um, answering WH questions, recounting the past, getting in more details, making complex fictional stories, getting an idea of more than one character and things like that. So 
to encapsulate this, it's the beginning, the middle, and the end of an episode. And this is the basic unit of a plot. And of course, as days go on and there are more kickoffs or an author writing a, um, um, a multi-chaptered story um, would have many kickoffs that are going on and would certainly have more than one character and certainly the setting would change making multiple episodes. But we are trying to get our children to develop one episode and be able to talk about that between pre-K and the end of grade one. Okay. okay. Um, and then this was okay. just... Yes, now this is to show the developmental sequence. And in every, every book that we have written, the developmental sequence is in there in iconic form. And that sequence stems from Stein and Glenn and way back in narrative developmental research. It's not only communication disorders area, but it's psychology. And um, we have quotes from Jerome Bruner and Vygotsky. But all of these, uh, the, the road to a complete episode begins with just the character and setting. And what is great about Brady is that we can take the character and of course we have eyebrows that go on Brady and mouth so I think I dropped my oh I here Let's go. all right so we could have this and we could also this so we've got all kinds of things that we can do with the Brady doll and the facial expressions for character. We can put pictures of and characters let's, let's up. that we talk about yes. the emotion. Mm -hmm. we're so really anyway, we have characters and settings. Characters, settings, and actions. Characters, settings, kickoffs, and reactions. Character, setting, kickoff, feeling, plan, attempts to carry out the plan and the consequence. That's the complete episode. And then in the distance, which Brady doesn't deal with, are advanced narrative structures. The thing that we're trying to get our students to do using Brady is to get to the area of the complete episode via just talking at first about characters and settings and actions in those settings. So in preschool, that's why it imp was important for us to have this. It's just that Only there is left. rapid development of um, all of these areas, executive function, language development, cognitive flexibility, and play. They all are coming together in preschool, which makes you very, very important. Okay. Um, and I, I just want to say, again, um, people, a lot of people are asking the question, you will get access to the slides. And um, all of our, everything is always available on our website. A lot of people email me and I do my best to email you back the link. But if you go to, I will show you at the end. Um, I, we only have 20 minutes left and because of the beginning, it's, it's been, so if I don't get to your questions, I'm sorry, I'll do my best. But it's only just the two of us. So, um, as far as older children, this is not the webinar for older children. This was really, I think we had in the description, it's really for great for ages like three to six, three to seven, or if you have some children that ability wise are, no. are younger. Yes. Um, but, uh, but we do have other webinars that reach the older student yes. um, area and all of those are on our website. I'll show those at the end. And we just did one two weeks ago, one week ago, with uh, Linda LaFontaine for middle school. So um, there is a, a depth and a breadth to what we're doing. And today is this so symbolic play. And I'm going to let you um, talk Oops, sorry. about Sorry, I'm just, I'm trying to get Declan on okay. here. So now this is my grandson, Declan. And the other day when I went down uh, to Declan's house, of course, with my mask. Um, there's Declan and his mom, Nora, my daughter. Hear you. Oh, okay. maybe everyone else can hear you. Hold on. Um, sorry, it's my, it's our computer. Just a minute. Let me make sure it's. Down. There you go. 
Okay. Hold on. There we go. Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Yes. So Declan. Hi, Nora. Hello. Okay, so um, I was going to talk with Deck. tell about going down to Declan's house the other day. And Declan had made a beautiful, well, he was sitting out in the driveway with a box, a cardboard box. And he had his feet in the box and was using the box as a desk. And on that box, he made a wonderful picture of his dad when his dad was a little boy with me and his dad's um, father and his two sisters. And he was talking about that and having a wonderful time. He made a Ferris wheel and was talking about um, the time we went to Disney World. And so we were talking about all the things that we had done at Disney World. And I thought that his drawing was a wonderful drawing. And my point is, there it is, that you can get a lot out of a drawing. So even just looking at the children's drawing, there is uh, Jerry's grandfather, um, his, gra his grandfather and I, I'm on the right side, and I'm not quite as tall as, yeah, and I was wondering if Declan could talk about how come he made Nana shorter. And there's his dad right next to um, Pepe. So Declan, how come you made Nana shorter than Pepe? There you are. It's really nice. It's the easiest thing to do. Measurement. Say that again. Measurement. That's measurement. That's measurement. Yes, you were measuring. You had, you were looking at us as, and you said Pepe had five of these measurements that you were doing, didn't you? How did you hold your hand? Your fingers, just like that, just like Nana's doing, yes. And then you said Nana only had four of those, that's why she was shorter, wasn't that it? I know, and your dad was what? I'll be good dad. <laughs> your dad be, was only daddy a was little good. boy. Good. Declan, I wanted everybody to see your picture. That's why. Thank you very much for doing this and talking about measurement. I thought that was a big word for a little boy in kindergarten. Very good. Okay. And be, be, before you guys go, I know it's late in the afternoon. <laughs> thank you, Nora. But before you go, um, I wanted to just say Nora is um, a former disabil disability specialist for Head Start, and she's currently um, a preschool teacher having to deal with what a lot of you are dealing with. And Nora, I just, you had told me, um, you know, that you kind of found some challenges with doing Zooms with very little littles. And I was just wondering if you could just relay that story about what you want to try to do for parents and what you did with the flat Brady. Just really, we only have a couple seconds because of the technical I'll difficulties. Be quick. I'll be quick. So basically my, I have a lot of parents who are teachers and they're still working and they're doing their own Zooms. So I was trying to figure out how to keep the foundation of literacy that we have built so far. So I took each of the build the Brady's, colored it and sent it to each of my children. So when I read a story over a Zoom or when I record a video, they can work with me through the different steps on each of the Brady's or each of the different stories that I use. The parents like it because it's hands-on for the kids. They can work with me, take the stars off. Like Mary Ellen said, I have a little Velcro there. Um, and it's just really nice. We're, so they're not losing what they've already learned about the character and the setting, kickoff, feelings and the fixing at the end of the story, the solution. Um, and they're liking it and they're continuing to do it with me. So the Build a Brady was very um, successful for me during this virtual learning that we're doing. And so Nora, you use the, the big Brady on the screen when you read it and retell, yes. and then they use it, um, they use that at home. Correct. And you, and, and I love that you did it for, and I guess part of that is, you know, with COVID, the other good thing is they can wash it off and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's just something, but like you had said to me earlier, you love the idea that you, they still can have the hands on and it just gives you that extra little bit of engagement. 
I know. Right. And even for the parents who aren't teachers and might not have the background of knowing all the different steps of Brady, two of my parents do know about Brady because they're educators. Um, it was nice for them to kind of get the little information and then have the steps um, that, you know, was given to them at the beginning of the year, but also like a refresher and then to be able to sit with the kids and do it. So even when they're, I'm not reading a story, they can just have those thoughts in their mind being, oh, where's the setting? What was the kickoff? And they can have those conversations with the kids at home. Yes. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Nora. Thank you, Nora. And thank you for coming in and to talk about that. And um, where's our... Oh, nice and a couple people asked, this is right here. This is called a, a th and what Nora just had, this is just one we have that we colored in. This is called a build a Brady. And I'm going to show you at the end, um, we've put together a little package that people might want and you get 20 of these. They're not cut out. They're in, we don't have the, the full size mm -hmm. one, but um, they're, they come in a pad of 20. So you so that'll come and I'll show you at the end so you can get a better idea. We wanna move on to our other examples. Thank you, Nora. I'm gonna shut you All right, no up your video. Thank you so much, Nora. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So, what did I just, okay, I'm trying to, um now i'm going back to this oh. all right so wait i'm trying to sheila's bringing me back to where we were but our purpose today was really to show you the multitude of things you can do with brady with the curriculum it was never meant to be something that was just alone by itself it was meant to be a collaborative tool so that's what I really um, want to focus on as well. And expository discourse or learning information is something that um, is very, very important as well. For instance, when uh, Nora would give art projects to her, the parents to do with her class, those art projects were a project that you could talk about what you had as part of the art project, and then the sequence of how to do the art project just with the Brady beads. And the more you do it, the more you're getting your students to be able to internalize the structures, internalize the structures for the multiple meanings that they all have. And um, I know we had uh, information books out yeah. here. I don't, oh, here they are. Oh. <laughs> Trying to be, uh, Rabbits, rabbits, and more rabbits I have here because we have a lot of rabbits and now we have some uh, foxes in our yard. Um, we have a lot of bees now and Casey's very concerned about the bees. So Gail Gibbons writes books that are very, very elementary for um, information text. And Actually. you can talk about these um, with your students using Brady. Who are the characters? The character is you. You're out in the yard. That's the setting. You see some bees. What do the bees do? Okay. They buzz. Okay, you're out in the yard and you're there with your, um, I could be there, okay, putting my girl hair on. And we're in the yard and what do the bees, we see the bees and the bees are buzzing. The bees are flying. The bees are sitting on flowers. What else do bees do? And, and then we could read the book. And, and I just, it, it, just want to make a quick note not to extend because I know we're, we're down to, to like about 11 minutes left. But just having a six-year-old here and knowing that um, even as a parent, trying to make little things that happen. You, you can live in a city. You can live in the, in the country. Either way, we can get some of the, this um, more content-based um, uh, learning done this summer and during COVID, just based on little things like Mary Ellen's talking about. And if we're working on listing and sequencing with just simple things like this. The art project or yeah. what you happen to see in your setting. Mm -hmm. And you can use your star actually to talk about what is there. What do you see in this setting? Oh, I see bees, I see flowers, I see rabbits. Okay. Um, 
All right. Next is the tail. Okay, so I just wanted to mention the vital aspect of routines with Brady. Um, the schedule's the big picture, you know, so we got to clean up the classroom. The routines are the way we do that. And there are many children who don't get the routines. They just don't see it implicitly. And they have to have a, um, oh, we can't hear Mary Ellen very well. Okay, um. so the routines are small steps to carry out the big schedule. So repeating the steps to a routine helps kids to be confident in what to do in school. And it kind of becomes um, a, a way to detect the hidden curriculum um, as far as routines go. So maybe later on when the teacher says, well, it's math time, take out your pencil, the child will know that it's not only the pencil, it's other things. And so Brady comes with two stars, one for you to put on the Brady and one for you to hold up during a change in a, a routine, okay? Or a transition between two things that you might be doing. And since we'd be doing a lot of hand washing, that might be one of the routines. And you took a picture okay. of the place. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have a picture of the place up here, okay? So identifying feelings and emotions, the six universal feelings in Brady. I just wanted to talk about them. This is part of the poster. This is part of the poster. And um, it could be, they could be put right here if we wanted to talk about that, where you can put other heads as well of other characters. But anyway, we have the six universal feelings, which are the ones that you want to teach your students who are young. You want them to know the difference between happy and sad. Happy, sad, mad, scared, surprised, and disgusted are easy to picture on faces, which is why they are the first ones to teach. Although this comes from our... Um, social communication collection. It's all about the story. And um, in that, there are a lot of synonyms for each of the six universal feelings as time goes on. So it's very important. Feelings are very important for um, narrative development, for talking about books and stories, but they're extremely important for talking about human interaction. And, then just and are you ready to play outside? This is one of Mo Willems' books, and I had um, used it in one of my many, many lessons that I've been doing through the co-ed, uh, co-ed, COVID time <laughs> here. And um, that's the link at the bottom to that, to my lessons. But I just wanted to show you a few of the pictures from the book. And just taking a book walk, a picture walk for feelings. So here's Piggy and Gerald, and right now they're going, the plan, the setting is that they're going to play outside and the actions are that they're going to do this, 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 and this. Are we, we're going to do everything today. We're going to skip. Now notice how Piggy is getting thrilled, thrilled. Nothing can stop us. That is exuberant. Then plink, that's the kickoff. It begins to rain. And what does that make Piggy feel? A little bit distressed. Oh no, it's starting to rain. It's raining, it's pouring, she's devastated. Look at her, um, ears are down, arms are folded, body language is showing up there. So it's pouring. Um, I've never seen so much rain in my life. Hands on hips, okay, all right. And I do not like rain. Body language tells it all. So we can look, I am not a happy pig. How do we know that? And we can show that can on, we show it? on Brady. Can the children show I am not a happy pig? Well, of course the children can. They can show it on their own faces. And a lot of our children need a lot of work in body language. We do a whole workshop on this. And we do a whole workshop on body language. And but anyway, I am not a happy pig. So this would be how we could show it. 
And we could also show it on the power of our eyebrows. All right. Brady is also a tool for problem solving. And um, I was talking with Casey before, Casey is Sheila's daughter who peeked in at the beginning, before the webinar and she's out on the porch with paint, doing a painting. <laughs> I said, how are we going to keep the paint on the table and not on the floor? So we would what? We would say Casey was getting ready to paint. Oh shoot, sorry. And so we wouldn't have any kickoffs or any spilled paint. What should she do? And we talked about that. First, we would get a piece of large white paper and put it down on the table. Then we would get a container for the paint. So anyway, we problem solved. Okay. okay. And, and just, I wanna to mention too, mm -hmm. we, um, we do have also, you know, if they're a little, like Casey uses the story grammar marker. And for those of you that are familiar with the story grammar marker, she uses this herself. She has it with her. She even will sometimes hook this onto her clothes and she'll use this if she's having a problem. And it's pretty amazing to see a six-year-old be empowered to independently solve a problem. Um, so I just wanted to mention that as well. I think that you want to on that. Yeah, and so we, so we, so right now we have, um, because a little bit, the title of the Mo Willems book is, um, are you ready to play? Oh, are you ready to play outside? And we'll have the reference in the PowerPoint. Um, so you are going to receive the slides. So it's about four o'clock now and we are, we were planning on, um hold on doing a lesson or having mary ellen go through and get uh bear feel scared and doing a little bit of a lesson and then doing our um giveaway i'm just wondering if you could show me by a show of hands who would be okay with that because this is going to be um recorded anyway so for those of you that cannot stay on um it will be recorded and you'll get access to the recorder recording. But for those of you that can stay on, um, I think we'd like to do this just because it would finish it up for the recording and then we would have the complete um, Brady. So I see we've got quite a few people that can stay. Okay, a lot of people want us to do it. Okay, so we're gonna continue with this. And um, I'm again, I'm sorry. I, I should always say it's 90 minutes because I feel like yes. it always ends up being at least 10 minutes longer than I think it's going to be. So, um, but for those of you that have to go, don't worry. You're gonna, get, you're gonna get a link to the recording. You'll get a link to the slides. You'll get a link to the free lessons that we referenced. So, um, so don't worry. And so we're going, and a few people said they'd like to attend a webinar on social communication. Maybe that, maybe that will be our next one. We did one outside. So, um, okay, so hold on okay. one second. I will get over here. So Bear Feels Scared by Karma Wilson, illustrated by Jane Chapman. And I love this, this, um, all the bear stories, their bear feels this and that, all kind, bear feels thankful, that's another thing. They all rhyme, so that's rhyming in here for your phonemic, phonological awareness area. So in the deep dark woods, and of course that's a description, deep dark woods. In the deep dark woods by the strawberry veil, a big bear lumbers down a small crooked trail. Bear's tummy growls as he looks for a snack, but it's cold, 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 so the bear turns back. He is not home yet when the sun starts to set and the bear feels scared. Sorry. Now I could stop right there and I could oh. talk about he's not home and the sun is setting. That's a kickoff for him. Bear shakes and shivers as the storm starts to howl. Bear mutters, what is that? Are there spooks on the prowl? The path gets dimmer and the sky grows gray. The bear looks to and fro, but he can't find his way. Could you say that? He can't find his way. 
He huddles by a tree and he wails, poor me. Can you do that? Can you huddle? Do you know what it means to huddle? And the bear feels scared. So that's another kickoff for the bear. Meanwhile, back in the warm, cozy lair, the lair is his den where he lives. Friends start to worry for their poor lost bear. These are all the friends who live with him in the lair. It is late, Mouse squeaks, and our bear doesn't roam. There's a storm, cries Hare, that's a rabbit. Shouldn't bear be home? Can we say that? Shouldn't bear be home? How would you look? Okay. Wren tweets from his perch. We must all go search. What if bear feels scared? So they're taking the perspective of the bear. They're wondering what it would be if he felt scared. The friends bundle up and begin to prepare. They form a search party for their lost friend, Bear. Now, I'm not going to do this today, but I could take it from the point of view of Bear and all the things that he's experiencing, but also on another day from the point of view of the friends. What made them do what they're doing? But Bear is all alone and he sheds big tears. There's a noise in the forest and he feels big fears. Bear trembles in the wind, how long, how he longs for a friend, and the bear feels scared. He's longing for his friends. Badger lights a lamp and shouts, let's go. All the birds search high while the rest search low. With a flounce and a flutter, they set off together. They trudge down the trail through the wild, wet weather. So the weather has changed. They call, ho oh, bear, are you there, are you there? And the bear feels scared. But he perks up his ears. Is it Mole calling out? Is that hare's voice? Does bear hear him shout? Wren, owl, and raven all squawk from the sky. It is bear, he is there, and they sigh big sighs. Why are they sighing? because they feel wonderful that they're finding him by a tree waits bear 10 feet from his lair. So he was almost home. We could mark out those 10 feet. And bear looks scared. With a flap and a flurry, all the friends gather near and they give him bear hugs. They calm his bear fears. Later in the night, all cluster in a heap. The bear spins stories while his friends fall asleep. They're probably very tired and he's telling them all about things. Cuddled up tight, they snore through the night and the bear feels safe. It's a nice story for now, for these times, but I wanted to show you, um, my co-author is Sheila Zagula, my sister, who has um, 30, Eight, retired after 38 years in the Westfield Mass Public Schools. And she did, um, she's put on most of the blogs on the website. But what she did with this particular story is she has a heart with Bear in, um, in his lair. And the other one with Bear in the forest. So see the two things? And she's got mobiles that the kids made. So he felt safe, content, and loved in the lair with his friends, but in the forest, he felt scared, alone, and worried. She also, with first graders, had them fill out a, um, a setting map for the lair and the woods and how the lair, the woods looked windy, they were wet, they were dark, they were lonely and rainy. In the lair, it was warm, quiet, calm, dry, and light. And then she modeled a paragraph for the woods and a paragraph for the lair with these first graders. 
The woods are dark, cold, and wet. It is very windy and rainy there. So they just took what they put on their map and they wrote sentence, sentences. And they did the same thing with the layer. So I read the story. Somebody just said her middle schoolers need this with the setting. Oh, yes. And oh, I should mention, it is never a waste of time to spend time on the setting. It's a huge thing that is often just, it's just like where and when does the story take place? It's much more than that. A setting is much more than a time and a place. That's why the seventh graders still need work on it. So we could tell the whole story from the bear's perspective, from the um, friend's perspective, and we could do literacy work like this, tying things into um, words. Okay, so go ahead now. Um, okay, so yes. So let me go back to where, where were we? I had um, nothing on my... Um, Wait, we did the problem solving, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, why is there nothing there? I don't know. But that's all right if you have something there. Wait a minute. Uh, I can everyone can lose everyone? Is everyone still there? Okay. Um, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna just put myself. I don't know why that's happening. Okay, I'm glad you're still there, Mary Ellen. Um, Mary Ellen somehow isn't seeing my my screen, so I'm just going to um, I'm just going to quickly go to I'm going to show you the things that we talked about, and we're also going to um, do our drawing. So um, people had asked about lists of books and different things like that. All of that is in our um, in our manual and hold on one second. Let me, um, sorry. Okay. So I'm getting a little, okay. So I'm going to show you our website. Hold on. I need to just get our website here so that you'll be able to see where you're going to get some of this free stuff that we've been talking about. Everybody likes something free. Um, so Okay, so here's our website, mindwingconcepts.com. Oh my gosh, Elise, your manual is from 1994. So you have the first manual. Oh my goodness. So that is crazy. It's been updated since then a couple times. Um, okay, so this is our website. Um, I just want to say that during this entire webinar, my daughter has been sending me text messages. She's six. That is a kickoff for me when I'm trying to focus on you guys. She I'm, has my phone. She has Nana's phone In and she, she needed something. I think that was supposed to be for emergencies only. So I'm losing <laughs> my mind. Um, but, <laughs> oh, Gwen McVeigh, you have the first manual as well. So I want to show you something. First of all, a lot of people were asking where they're going to be able to find um, the slides and all the other information when, when this is over. So if you look here, um, under workshops and professional development, you click webinars. Everything from all of our webinars will be here. So right now it's just how to register, but later tonight and definitely by tomorrow, you'll also get like what it shows up for the last one. See where it says like watch video, download the handout, download downloadable resources, all that kind of stuff. So, and you can see all of our past webinars are all here technology tools, trauma-sensitive distance learning, intersecting story grammar marker with technology. Um, you're also going to be able to get um, a certificate of attendance. Um, so you, um, you, yes, you can download a certificate of attendance and you can use that toward certificate maintenance hours. We can't get, we couldn't, we can't apply for ASHA CEUs because for us, um, it, we need to pr pr uh, apply for it eight weeks in advance and then it's not really helpful during COVID because then it's summer. So in order for us to do this in a timely manner for you, we're not able um, to do that. So, but um, a couple of people also just said, well, so I wanna show you one other thing though before we get into this stuff. 
Um, the links, I'm just going to type in bear here where it says this. And you're going to see a very cranky bear. You're going to say, see bear feels scared. Alaska's three bears. That's just one popular topic for children. Um, so see right here, bear feels scared. So um, this is all that kind of stuff that Mary Ellen just went over. Um, you can use this to, um, to do it yourself. And we've got tons and tons and tons of hundreds of lessons right there. Um, that's under, hold on, my screen is, it's under, under blog. If you go under blog, you can, oops, search by category. Um, okay. Meanwhile, my six-year-old literally just wrote to me, sorry, mommy, am I being too overwhelming? I am losing my oh. mind. She just, she sent me like 50 texts. Okay. Um, and okay. now I want to show you really quick. We're going to do, we are going to, we're going to do the raffle in two seconds. I'm sorry. This is taking so long. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to show you if you shop, if you go to our website, shop by category, click on Brady. Okay. Now you're going to notice that things, first of all, you'll notice things in red that are discounted. The Brady kit is 25% off. So you're actually getting $240 worth of materials. The kit price is already discounted down to 194, but um, it's now 146. That's a huge, huge discount. We don't usually do that. Um, and it, you can also get, that includes everything, that includes everything we showed. Um, you can also get a quick start, which is $71.96 on sale here. Um, and that includes that ma really amazing poster Mary Ellen showed and also the manual um, that we were referencing. Um, you can also get anything else separately. Um, and you can see that everything is discounted on this entire page. Anything having to do with Brady is discounted, okay? So, um, Bill DeBrady, yes, Bill DeBrady is, where is it? Oh my gosh, am I losing my mind? Where's Bill DeBrady? Yes, here it is. Somebody just said they saw Bill DeBrady. Yes, this is Bill DeBrady. That's what it looks like, and then it will end up being, um, it will end up being what, what Nora had showed you and what Mary Ellen had showed you a little bit. She called me like 30 times. Didn't mention, don't mention it. Um, oh, and this is the Brady checker also that we are talking about that comes with, um, and we do have digital Brady's. We do. Um, that's right. Yeah. It's Casey. Um, these are right here. Um, that's what they, this is, these are all the icons you get with this. And, um, they are, let's see, where's the, where's the price? Seven ninety five for those. Um, now you, now what we have here, and I'm going to show you this. This is what we've created for today. Um, it's forty nine ninety five, and what you get is a set of twenty of the Bill Brady's. You get a set of twelve of the Brady checkers, and you get two strips of. The, the Brady stickers and what you can do with, you can do many things with the stickers, but one of the things is you can have the children um, put the stickers right in the books. Um, like you can sort of see here, the setting is on this page where the kickoff, I don't know if you can see that, the kickoff and the feeling are here. Um, and these, so these are the stickers. You're gonna get a set of 25 and what you can do is the, you, they're reusable they're reusable um but i also am going to show you hold on this that's going to come with it this is 50 dollars um for this set hold on um i'm going to show you this this is also coming with it um this at home resources for learners for early learners and you're going to get this downloadable and along with everything else that I just mentioned to make sets, you wouldn't email them, you would mail them to the parents. 
It comes with a sample letter that you can mail to the parents. The stickers don't, don't typically, they're low tax, so they don't typically damage books. The parents will get this, which is a whole thing about how, you know, what Brady means and the whole point of Brady and the, all the different, I, the different parts of Brady. And then this parent or family Brady so that they know what all the parts, um, the bigger ones that, that what it means. And then you can also send with them a character map, a setting map for very young children or a character map and setting map for kids that are more late pre-K, kindergarten, um, first grade even. Um, so uh, that is the downloadable that comes with um, this new set that we put together just for today because, oops, because um, we knew that people may be working with uh, children remotely and may want, even if you already have our kit, I mean, all of this stuff comes with the kit anyway, um, but we knew that if you already had our kit and you've been working um, with other people, you might, um, if you've been working remotely, you might want to have something like Nora did to engage. Um, so that is also available. So I want to do the drawing so that we don't have, um, so, and then the digital icons, um, I will show you. I know a couple people asked. I'm just going to show that really, really, really quick. Um, <clears throat> uh, where am I doing here? Screen share. Um, sorry. I know a lot of people need to go. I just want to get to show you because people are asking about, sorry, those are all the other icons. These are the Brady icons. This is what they, they come like this. You get all of these um, digitally each individual, and then you get those that Mary Ellen showed at the beginning. So anything that you want, you that comes with the digital, they're $7.95. So I'm gonna do the drawing right now. Um, and the first drawing is gonna be for the Brady pad. Um, and yeah, if you get the full Brady kit, we will email you the resource PDF, yes. Um, oh, and Sean, Sean's, um, a couple of webinars with Sean Sweeney talked about using the digital icons. Um, so let me, okay, I'm you just going to, yep, you can find those on our website. Any other questions? Just there's a contact us on our website. Um, oh, and Hillary just said that she, she purchased them and she loves them. Okay. So the first winner I have to just go by, I've just got a little app here. Um, is Jessica Hoppa, sorry, Marianne. is Jessica Hoppa there? Is she on? I just, I used something that I already have. Oh, Jess, Jessica, you're there. Okay. So you win the Build a Brady pad. So you'll get, um, you will get this, the Build a Brady pad. We'll just have you send, well, I'll contact you to get your, your address. And then, um, the next, let's see, I got to click through on here. Um, the next winner is going to be for the stickers. Courtney Trepanier. Courtney Trepanier, are you on here? Um, Courtney, well, we're going to, it's T R E P A N. Um, hi, Lori. Oh, Colleen. Oh my God. I'm reading the wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's Colleen. It's Colleen. I'm sorry about that, Colleen. You win a pack of stickers. So there's 25 sets of stickers in here. That's what they look like. Colleen Trepanier. I'm sorry. I said Courtney. I, the next person I think from that was Courtney. Um, and we just got an email from Leanne from Hawaii who said she has started to use the digital icons that she won on the last one. Um, okay, and now the third winner, here we go. The third winner is Ashley Strong, and you are going to win a set of the digital icons. Ashley Strong. Oh, yay, okay, you're there too. So the three of you, um, I'm going, actually, Ashley will be emailing you and then Colleen 
Um, and Jessica, I'll contact you to get your um, address. Actually, you know what? Why don't you email me your address here, your mailing address, because we will have to send that to you. Okay, that's my email. It's in the chat. And, um, and thank you so much for bearing with us. We are now okay. at 420. Yep. Um, so have a Mary Ellen's here to say, Hi. you want to put your face well, close by. Um, we, we basically, we, you will have access to the, to the recording. Um, so don't worry about that. You'll have access to the slides um, and any of the other special handouts that we mentioned, the links will be in there. Thank you all for attending. Um, it's been a big challenge. Um, hey, Kano. Um, it's been a big challenge for us to do these weekly um, or every other week, um, but we really feel like we've gotten such great feedback and um, people seem to really want us to continue to do these as soon as we, as, as often as we can. Um, the, so well. What? We do go out to places. Yes, and we, uh, yes, we and can. we do, and, and in between, we're providing professional development. Um, hi, Linda. We're providing professional development via um, Zoom. So if you are in a school district that you think might want to do that, uh, mahalo, mahalo, <laughs> aloha, thank you. Thank you, aloha to all of our Hawaiians and mahalo. Thank you for, uh, mahalo for saying that. Um, and uh, so if anyone is interested, please let me know if you're interested in doing, um, you know, full day workshops. Um, and we are, we are going to be, somebody had, a couple people had asked about um, doing full day, you know, workshops. And we are working on putting some of those together for the summer um, because we do know that some people might want to be able to do that. Um, so, oh, Danielle, hi. Yes, I've been going crazy. Um, doing this, I am going to call Beverly because um, I would love to be able to, we've been going, how long have we been going down there to, to train you guys? At least 10 years probably. So we want to continue and that would be awesome on Zoom. Um, so I am going to plan on doing something like that. Um, I, but I am going to call Beverly, Danielle. Okay. So I, that's going to be my plan for tomorrow, my first thing on my list. So thank you all so much again. And um, the set, Yes, the session will be posted, um, definitely. Um, we, um, we will get it posted by probably a little bit later this afternoon. Um, and that is about it. I think we are, <sighs> I think we're done. <laughs> the app is still available. Yes, we should talk about that next time. Thank you so much. Thanks to you, thanks, thank you all so much. Um, Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say goodbye. <laughs> okay. Oh, and the app. Okay, I will look at the app. Thank you, Angelica. I will take a look at that app. Thank you. Um, I know I have a couple more questions. Um, yeah, uh, we do make stamps. We don't make Brady stamps, but we do have, um, same icon. But we have the same, we, and actually our stamps, we are going to get brand new stamps Tuesday, and they even come with a, um, a an ink pad, and they're new and improved, and they're awesome. So um, thank you so much again, everybody. Have a good weekend. Mahalo, 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 <laughs> and aloha, and um, have a good weekend, and um, we will see you soon. Please stay well and um, stay safe, thank you.